quantum physics, parallel universe theory says that the universe is constantly splitting up and that each new universe contains copies of us. Long a staple of science fiction novels, the theory was laughed at when it was first presented 50 years ago by Hugh Everett III, a PhD student at Princeton. But this year, when experts gathered in Oxford to discuss the concept, it was no longer science fiction. My guess is that parallel universes really do exist. It's possible for you to be in one end of the universe and on another end of the universe at the same time. I think it'll go down as one of the great developments in the history of science. To understand what parallel universe theory means and why it's finally winning over many skeptics, you have to take a ride to the furthest reaches of the known universe. This is a photo album of our universe the most ambitious photo album to date. Vast technological improvements in computers, space telescopes, and digital photography are allowing scientists to see and study the universe in unprecedented ways. We now have measurements, data, hard numbers. And some of that data contradicts one of the greatest names in physics, Albert Einstein. One of the most basic questions we have about our space is if it goes on forever, or if it's curved, like Einstein said it could be, so that if you go real, real far, you come back from the other side. To answer that question, cosmologists used basic geometry. The angles of a flat triangle equal 180 degrees. On a curved surface like the Earth, as Max shows on his tortilla chip, those angles add up to more than 180 degrees. And we've made exactly this experiment using these baby pictures of the universe where the light rays correspond to the sides of the triangle and the amazing conclusion is that as far as we can tell space is perfectly flat and if space is flat that could mean the universe is infinite space can't just end I mean, would there be a sign here saying warning space ends here if space is really infinite what does that mean well, the implications are crazier than you might first think, because that would mean that there are infinitely many stars, infinitely many planets, places that look a little bit... And if you travel far enough in an infinite universe, probability says you'll find duplicates of Earth, even duplicates of yourself. Even come to a region of space which is exactly identical to our universe. <laughs> Sound nuts, right? Now... If we travel from the infinite universe to the tiny world of subatomic particles, we find evidence of a very different kind of parallel universe. The theory begins, innocently enough, with the concept of waves. Just like the ripples in a stream, light creates waves. When you shine light through two slits, those waves interfere with each other, creating a light and dark pattern. Now, when you fire single particles at those same slits, they should behave like tiny soccer balls and land behind one slit or the other. But they don't. Instead, they create a wave interference pattern. Like the light waves, each of the particles is able to go through both slits at the same time. Scientists say that this is only possible if the particle exists in different universes. So what does this mean when you apply it to larger objects, like people? Now, if little particles can be in two places at once, then I should be able to be in two places at once, because I'm made of particles. Consider the situation in a gambling casino. When I make a decision about whether I'm going to put my chips on the black or on the red, on the roulette table, I'm thinking, thinking, what should I do? And then in the end, there might be one little calcium atom which goes either one way or, or the other way and triggers the firing and some synapses. Neuron starts to do its thing and soon a whole bunch of neurons are doing their thing and my brain has decided and I put my money on red. But as quantum mechanics tells us, that one atom can go into two places at once, which means there's going to be ultimately two me's doing the opposite things. One is going to lose all that money and one is going to end up very happy. With every decision we make, we split in two. The idea that our experience is like a tree uh, that has a branch and branches again and branches again, that's the picture that modern physics teaches us. And uh, 
I actually like that emotional way of thinking about this because it takes a little bit of the pressure off of making the right choice. And it's not just theory. Franco Wong found a way to see the parallel universe in action. Right, but you can you can see that you think that you know something, and every time there's a new experiment, we would scratch our heads and say, "What is happening?" In this laser array, he managed to split a photon into two versions of itself, in two separate universes. Franco then used special filters to measure the photons, and the results amazed him. If one of the photons you measure is horizontal, you'll find that the other one inevitably to be vertical. The photons act like a magical pair of loaded dice that always add up to seven. If you look at one die, it looks completely random, except that whenever you look at both of them, it turns out to be always seven. The photons began as a single photon. Now they are two photons, but they remain linked. You can take this particle and move it to the other end of the universe. And the exact moment that this particle does something, the other particle knows that it has happened. And scientists don't know why this happens. They don't know how it happens. They just know that it happens. And many are convinced that this breakthrough will usher in a new era of high-speed communication and super small computers. Seth Lloyd, a professor of mechanical engineering at MIT, is working on making a quantum computer. We're talking with individual atoms in these computers, but it takes a lot of uh, uh, apparatus to address individual atoms, you know. The number of different things that a quantum computer can do simultaneously is... He demonstrates his concept with an apple. An apple is beautiful and green. It smells good. Mm. It tastes delicious. You have bits of information stored on the individual base pairs of DNA. This apple is all about information. But in Seth's quantum computer, each bit would be infinitely smaller. It would be stored in a single atom. And then what you do to talk to the atoms is you zap them with light. So this is a picture of a wave coming in. Then this atom will gradually start wiggling back and forth and suddenly, whoa, whoa, whoa. It's managed to flip its spin. The thing that makes them different from ordinary computers is that quantum mechanics is weird. You know, that's a technical term, and it means, like, funky, right? They behave in a very funky fashion. So an electron, for instance, can be here and there at the same time. That's totally normal in quantum mechanics. Being in two places at the same time, a single electron can calculate in different universes simultaneously. It's the kind of mystery that makes Seth happy. <laughs> yeah, this is the best of all possible universes. I'm sure of it.